and it's also appropriate that I'm speaking to psychologists because the problem, the biggest problem, the biggest down right that we are suffering from is within us. Let us prepare ourselves, and you are the best as psychologists. I'm so honored. Thank you, Mark, for introducing me to this beautiful people. Uh, yes, told you, my name is Dr. Fredra Sambu. I'm an Egyptologist, uh, meaning I've studied the ancient history of Egypt, as he likes to call it, as many of us like to call it these days, Kemet. Um, so I studied that, I took that field of study. Uh, and, uh, our friends, the white people, so they call me a mainstream Egyptologist. Uh, but my biggest mentor was the black Afrocentric Egyptologists who are not being recognized in the quote unquote official Egyptology. So, I have only 35 minutes, but I must show you some very important things and I must recruit you in this warfare. I, I am sorry about this thing, uh, <laughs> Mark. The title of this talk, I just got it today. King Tut is black and he is still black. <laughs> <laughs> I got it from somebody called uh, Anthony the Grand Clay II. He is in California. Uh, you will see something about him later. So otherwise, the talk is about ancient Kemetic origins of the Mute people of Kenya. The Mute people are the people known these days as Kanenji, but their original name is Mute. It's M Y O O, Mute, O T. And I'll show you where they come uh, from Kenya. As let us redefine Egypt a little bit. Kemet, which means country in Egyptian, uh, and sometimes we say black country in Egyptian, is in the Kanadian language, or the New York language, Emet, so it's the same word. And Egypt itself doesn't come from Kemet, the word Egypt comes from Kiptaios in uh, the ancient leader, I don't know what to get from this thing. Thank you. Okay, um, sorry about that. The, the name Egypt that we're going to discuss today a lot comes from this gentleman here who does a good worship. His name is Kiptai. Kiptai. He of the front. He of the foremost. He's the Lord. Kiptai. And you don't always say Kiptai, you say Ta. In the New York language or Egyptian language, the leader, the foremost, the Lord is Pa. But when you have time, you say Kipta, but the full pronunciation of it. So that is Ta. Kipta gives you the name in Greek, Kiptaios, which gives you the name Egypt, because the Greeks are the ones who promoted that name. Uh, the Canadian called the Lord and the same word Kiptaios, you remove the O's of Greek language, then you have Kiptai, and that is the current name word used by the Kalendi. Kiptai, or Ta, and Egypt to the Kalendi, Kiptai, the home of Ta, the home of the Lord, home of the leader, or the far home. Um, another name for Egypt, uh, or the important part of Egypt is, uh, is Koptos. This the name Koptos comes from Kiptaios as well, or Kiptia in Arabic. The Arabs call this gentleman here Kiptia. 
You will know that most current events or beyond events begin with their KIP. So did the teacher name, KIP. Uh, okay, you can get from my name as well, KIP, what it says there. Okay, so chemists, another name, which gives you the word chemistry because chemistry was started there, was invented there. That is the introduction of the lecture today. Where are we talking about? We're talking about uh, East Africa, which is outside, a little bit outside, and there, and Egypt here. Okay, so we will concentrate here and actually to get a perspective of where we are discussing. And in detail, uh, we are in Kenya here. We are discussing the Nyon who are in Kenya uh, most of the time. Some of them are still, are still in Sudan, Ethiopia, uh, Tanzania, Uganda. And even when she was talking about Congo. But we are concentrating on the ones in Kenya. And that's the long path they took from a place they call Top there. In ancient Egypt, in ancient Egypt it was called Top as well. So we are in Kenya. These people are in Kenya. This is the pre colonial map of Kenya. This land, this is the area occupied by the Nyon people, who are what we call it Nyon as well as Kalinjin, alternatively, they, they, they meet the same. Miot is their self name, the original name. Kalinjin is the more popular name. So that's why they occupy in Kenya. I, I personally come from this one, that red spot. And this other red spot is where a very famous citizen of the world comes from. And I don't know if you can recognize. You can't recognize it. Okay. Yeah. That is uh, uh, the most famous or most famous grandmother in the world. <laughs> she comes from here. And here they are when uh, the little young Barack Obama was practicing to carry some weight. He didn't know that he was practicing to carry the whole world. <laughs> so perspective of where we are. We are 70 kilograms of us. The people we are talking about, uh, they look like you. There's no difference. It's the color you, a, a color of the and such between you, you, you wouldn't tell the difference. But because they, because they dress like you now and like everybody else in the world now. But before being colonized, they used to dress like this. This is these pictures were taken of them, or drawings were made of them uh, at the beginning of colonization. Okay? That gentleman is Maasai, very close right to the Kalenjin. There is another Kalenjin, Kalenjin lady, Kalenjin man. If you know about ancient Egyptians, you have already seen them there in their pristine form and we are going to discuss that relationship. That is what this lecture is about. When in 1922, between 1922 and 1930, Howard Carter, uh, an Englishman, and uh, another Englishman, Lord Canaveral, opened up the tomb of the Kankam in Egypt, they had black and white cameras, black and white pictures, photography. So when he accessed the tomb of Tutankhamun, this is what he saw. This is what was planted in. Two Tutankhamuns, two pictures, two um, uh, statues of Tutankhamun, a standing man there. And he shut the tomb, he shut it for three years. He, he probably was upset to see that he was, all the labor was. Uh, Boy Ganda was just to find this black guy. <laughs> that was the down. He saw it and shut the narrow opening that he had opened for three years. Yet he had dug, dug, dug impatiently for the whole year. The third year he stopped and only visited occasionally. 
but he later opened the tomb anyway. So when uh, Howard Carter opened the tomb, <laughs> <laughs> of course he had not brought the gentleman before, and he later got his sarcophagus and opened and unwrapped his mummy. Mummy is the body of a dead person that has been wrapped up, stayed as it is for ages. So the Arabs call it Mumia. That's where the word mummy comes from. Mumia in Arabic. And Mumia in Arabic means luck, means tough. So the word is self explanatory, self inclinatory. Self inclinatory. Uh, for those people who want to remove the blackness from Egypt. So he took a picture. They took pictures then. Black and white. This was the face of Tutankhamun. His mummy. The real man. It's not anything. It's a picture. It's not a, it's a picture of the man. It's not oh, a statue carved by seven years. Okay, he took that picture and buried him away again. I think he lost interest. Put it back in his apartment <laughs> and buried him again. Only to, to be exhumed recently by Howard um, Hawass, Dr. Hawass, who is uh, here is still in charge of uh, monuments and uh, all the Egyptian uh, artifacts, but he's about to, to retire or to be forced out by the revolution. He has doomed him again, and this is the guy, Tutankhamun. This time, modern photographer, in full color. And he still, he took, um, scan, cut scan, scanned him, had him scanned, and friends of the scan taken to France and to America. What was taken to France was given to a woman, uh, expert in recreating from scans, like when they find that a person was long dead and they can't recognize, they don't know who it was, and the police have to know who it is. It was, they, they give certain experts to recreate. So they gave to a woman and told her, uh, an expert, and told her, this is to come down. And this is what she made <laughs> with her team in France. Because she did was Kakamu. And then she said, I, I'm giving you that color because the Egyptians look like this nowadays. And she admitted, it might have been darker, but that's what it is. <laughs> so there was a huge protest when uh, this guy here. Hawass is the one in charge of uh, uh, this thing to Egypt. He came to America without that thing now to come and show the Americans to the cover. But little did he know that he was visiting an America that was different, that was preparing to get an Obama as a president. <laughs> so he came with that uh, deceptive thing, only to be met by protest led by this attorney, uh, the Grand Clay, who is carrying that sticker, uh, or uh, what's that sticker, what do you call it? Uh, that placard, which says, uh, he took his back and he's still black. <laughs> and he faced, they faced him with all this uh, evidence of the color of the camera. So we are living today, Dr. Moore, with, um, instead of uh, melanin, uh, neuromelanin, I think it's dermatomelanin. I suppose that is the one of the key. Okay, and the picture, the frame that was sent to America, New York, the precise, where they have a lot of bodies, and identified bodies, to recreate identify who the dead person was. They gave this friends from Egypt, the same friends that were given to the French woman. They gave it to blind this time, not telling them who it was. And this is what the American experts produced. And they were not black experts, they were all experts. This is what they produced. Uh, now, I don't know, it's 
in uh, plasma, why it's chalk. So you see, is it clear that this is a black particle to you, bro? It's clear that this is a black particle. I don't know whether it's clear, that, but it's very clear to me. So to make it, uh, for, uh, I'm comparing to somebody from the same period. You see that lady, she's a princess. And they look alike, and they have these elongated heads. They look elongated, probably they are exaggerated. But the head is long, back to front. It's called the lipocephalic, uh, the lipocephalic uh, scar. It's probably long, back to front, as compared to the width. That's a, a, a big biologic trait. And this is exaggerated though, but this was the idea. And this is from the Amman of that period. So how do you tell a black person? So I came up with a technique, which I named after myself. I regret, <laughs> I regret following what I've been happening, following people who have seen it, uh, they have given me some feedbacks that some of them are not comfortable. But I hope you'll be comfortable with me, but it's going to haunt you. That is the technique. This is the common done in America, okay? Um, if you want to tell a black person, 90% of the time, or 90 something of the time, 98%, get his profile face to side. Draw a line touching the foremost part of the and the foremost part of the lip when this relaxes. For a black person, that line will repair, it will go away. For a white person like Alexander Quote and the Great, this figure I took, I took in, um, in, in, in London, that chin-lip line will go up and cut off some of the nose. For the Africa, it will miss the nose. Most of them, not all. So that's how I identify my monuments. I deal with monuments all the time in Egyptology. I check that first. And then, another one, the middle of the forehead here. Take a line from the middle down. Let it meet with the other. And for the African, you have a kind of triangle. For the non-African of this nature, you'll get a very narrow triangle. This, uh, this angles have sizes. Uh, but, uh, you keep that at 90 degrees. It must stay at 90 degrees, all right? It must stay at 90 degrees. Let these other ones find their own level. So, A, for the African, it's a small, almost, it's a small angle, almost less than 25 degrees. Or less than 25 degrees. For a white person like uh, Alexander quote unquote the great who conquered Egypt. Uh, it's almost 90 degrees. It's close to uh, the right angle one here, 90 degree one there. And this one is very small and meets very far away down here. The two lines meet here. For the African, the line meets very close to the chin. And I tried monuments, uh, all other monuments, and the answer was the same. That is, we don't argue when we see those monuments in Egypt these days. We just put this sandwich in, lip line, and we identify them. But I regret some friends have written me bad letters, some have congratulated me uh, because the thing is really racist. It's a racist kind of um, science. But I'm also uh, fighting against a lot of racism that has been put on us uh, for many years at our expense, at our expense, in advantage. But then, how I got the surprise here, 4,000 years old statue of one fellow, first of one fellow called Tenjuno, in Egypt as well. But 20, I think this really an accident. All my lines were going wrong. So this guy is misplaced. He's in Germany now. 
Also this, this thing is in German. Hitlerchild is here in German. But I think it probably comes from somewhere else, not in Jews. Or maybe we have a few of this type. Very few indeed. He is a contemporary of Chiyot himself. This is, you call him Kufu? King Kufu of the largest, the biggest pyramid. So, at the same time. So, the Kufu are not so different. Ah, uh, Kufu, I took this in Germany. I realized, as usual, they have destroyed the nose. But they, this time, they destroyed only one part of the nose, the right hand side. And since most human beings are identical on both sides, they are symmetrical, I said, okay, this part they have destroyed, I can get it off and turn this one to this side because it must have looked like the left hand side must have looked like the right hand side and came up with a restored kiosk. This is in Kufu, the one who built the largest and biggest pyramid. Okay. This is in Kufu himself. I'm trying to identify, tell you that this people were black. Prove to you before going back to Mjot, prove to you that we are talking about the same people. This is the Sphinx, the most famous uh, monument in Egypt. This is the, uh, probably it's Japan, some people say it's Japan, the one who built the second largest pyramid. And I say it's, it's different until it's all those 12,000 years older. Look! Uh, we argue that he's an African. This was this was painted or sketched by assistants of uh, Napoleon when Napoleon had just conquered Egypt. So they they they, they, they sketched everything. <coughs> they are taking measurements. So this is as it was, and you can trust this. This was myself. Now 1993. 200 years later, uh, it has been denuded a little bit. Uh, we don't have those great lips anymore. You see the lips? Those lips are gone. And that nose had been shot by the time Napoleon came. And here it was shot by the Turkish people. They always attack the nose first. They think it's the only thing that can tell you this person is black. The nose, the big nose. But they didn't know about the colonialism of the African which you prove using that sample chill with test. Uh, that, uh, namely that uh, the chill is forward um, compared to the forehead. Okay, you can see that we've denuded to a large extent, and then soon it will disappear as evidence that we have taken pictures of it. Now, you remember Chicago Tamil, the black pebble, we'll rest back a little bit. Uh, just to look at Tutankhamun again, himself, that man, the, the guy in charge of uh, monuments in Egypt, said Tutankhamun was not black. He said, he said that he got black because of uh, staying for many years underground and in a pocket. Uh, after they went to try to get black, I don't know. But check under the oak sought to prove that wrong before the days of Hawass. And what he was doing, he created a laboratory somewhere in Senegal to try and prove that you cannot gain melanin. It's not about melanin. You cannot gain melanin posthumously. If you are black, <laughs> <laughs> if you are black, you cannot, uh, if you are white, you cannot become black after death. It will make sense. So he was trying to prove. And he really proved. But sorry for him, he lived too early. This man came to prove it for us. This is a Chinese mummy, 400 years old. And He's still as general as he was when he was very <laughs> proof. But sorry, uh, my friend Chekandadio, he had died by the time the proof came.